Welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. I'm Village President Al Larson. In this episode, we'll find out what the Prairie Center for the Arts has in store for the upcoming season. Then we'll talk with the Children's Advocacy Center, and we'll close out the program with a visit from the Schweiker House Preservation Trust. All of this and more today here on Speaking of Schaumburg. Opened in 1986, Schaumburg's Prairie Center for the Arts has become one of the premier performance venues in the Northwest suburbs, hosting local entertainment as well as international touring acts. Here to tell us about the upcoming season is Cultural Commission Chair John Flamini. John, welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. Well, it's great to be here. It's great to be anywhere. It's great to be <laughs> anywhere, absolutely. Well, tell us about the new season that's, that's coming up. Well, um, it'll begin with uh, a Celebrate the Arts, which is a benefit for the arts, and that'll be on September the 13th. Now, Where's it going to be? That'll be here at the Prairie Center. And uh, there'll be, uh, as a matter of fact, that's going to be a lot of fun because it'll take us back to, well, us. Speakeasy like I, days. Like I remember. Speakeasy <laughs> days, right? <laughs> yeah, the speakeasy days. Okay. Of the Roaring Twenties. Okay. Uh, flappers, etc. There'll be all kinds of music and food. And my, my, there's going to be dancing, too, I heard. Dancing as well. Yep. Dancing on the main stage. And also, yes, also, um, if, you, if you have the magic word, you may get access to Big Al's Hideaway. Did you hear that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Should be a fun evening, especially uh, the plaza is going to have a, have some music on it too, right? Yes. And it's all going to be right here at the, at the Prairie Center. All here at the Prairie Center on September the 13th, beginning at 7 o'clock. Okay. And I think it's um, $55.00. If you buy your tickets ahead of time, and I think it's sixty-five dollars if you buy them at the door. If I want to buy tickets, what do I do? I call you, or I call the Prairie I Center. I think you can go to the Prairie Center um, um, dot org, and uh, you can actually, I think, buy your your tickets right off of the uh, right online, right? Right online. Right. So how, how many really people typically can come out for the, for this event? That's, oh. that's over 100, isn't it? Oh, easily. Yeah. 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 Anywhere between that and 150 or more. And there's a silent auction, too. I understand. There is a silent auction. Yes. Okay. All right. So that'll be fun. Will you be coming? I will be coming. Okay. That's good. That's mm -hmm. good. What, what else is in store for us as far as the season is concerned? Well, as far as the season is concerned, that'll begin uh, after uh, that. The, I think on um, it's 101 years of Broadway. Uh, which will begin, uh, I'm trying to remember the exact date. Let's see, exact dates, uh, Friday, September the 26th okay. at 8 o'clock. Okay. And uh, that will be a lot of fun because, obviously, uh, speaking of Broadway, there are going to be a lot of uh, different Broadway shows mm -hmm. that will be showcased. And Neil Berg, who is the man who does the arranging of, of all of this, uh, is, is really kind of a master. He has been here before. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. And uh, the group has been here to perform before. So uh, so we get a lot of show tunes, I would imagine. Oh, tons of show tunes. It'll okay. be a lot of fun, a lot of fun, a lot of memories. Okay. And uh, some different treatment, you know, a little bit different treatments of, okay. of what's going on. So you're familiar with his work? I'm kind of familiar with it, yeah. Sure, okay. You're a, music, music, you're a musician yourself, aren't you, John? <laughs> yes. Yes. I began, uh, oh, I was probably 15 years old, not old enough to join the union, uh, playing in uh, groups. It would play weddings and things like that, and then graduated from that to, uh, I played, uh, actually, I played the barn dance at WGN. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, with, uh, with Mayor Atcher. You were there with Bob Atcher? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was there with Bob Atcher. Uh, um, matter of fact, I remember him talking about this place because it wasn't built yet. You were a percussionist, right? I'm a percussionist, yes. We used to call them drummers. We used to call them drummers, but uh, we, are, we have come up in the world. Okay, all right. <laughs> what, else you got, what else you got on your, on your menu for, for the season? Uh, the season then uh, moves to um, Blues in the Night, which is um, uh, Kevin Purcell and the Night Burners and the Nick Moss Band. This is blues and country. Okay, really? Yeah, so if you're into blues and you're into country, or if you're into both, this is the place to be. I got tears in my ears from lying on my back in my bed just crying over you. You got it. 
I'm not sure they're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never ask me here back here again. <laughs> um, then they have um, Simply Three, okay, which is a group of string players. All right. Three. And they do uh, their versions of popular songs. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. There's several others, too. Karen Allison. I've heard a lot about I'm her. I'm sorry. Karen. 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 I've heard a lot about yes, her. Pronounced Karen. Yes. Great jazz singer. Uh, she can sing in Portuguese. Oh, really? She can sing in English. Well, how would I know that if, it's, if, if she sang in Portuguese? I mean. Well, you might. Well, you'd know it was a foreign language. <laughs> you might not know it's Portuguese, but you would know it's a foreign language. Okay. Um, she's just a, a great jazz singer. Just, just the great. And she plays piano. Okay. Yeah. Well, we got some other special, special other events, don't we? Is uh, Schaumer Youth Orchestra is performing? Yes. Uh, the Presto Holiday Concert. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's always fun. That's, that's a holiday season right around Christmas time, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Uh, It'll be uh, the 20th, December 20th. Okay. The Presto concert. Okay, and that that is that we had, had a choir this time, right? We have a choir now, yes. And uh, matter of fact, it's looking like the choir will probably be growing quite a bit, coming you know through the next. Uh, there's going to be another uh, audition coming okay. up here in September. Okay. And uh, that should increase the group to quite a bit. You know, that's going to be exactly. a nice event. Charmer Youth Orchestra and the choir. I know it's for, just going to be for the Presto. Oh, and Rob, Rob Palek is, probably makes makes some a little 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 things that he does at, at Presto, doesn't he? Oh yeah, you know, a little little shtick going yeah, on. He's he's the greatest. Yeah, yeah he's really. So so what else do you have? Rapidly here, we're rapidly. We're, coming, we're coming down the home stretch here. Coming now. down the home stretch. Okay. Um, I mentioned Karen Alice. Oh, Robert Randolph and the Family Band. Uh, this is he was on Letterman's show. He plays, it's unusual, he plays steel guitar, okay? Okay. But it's, and it's like blues and rock and, you know, different things, but just great steel guitar. Well, yeah. Talk and not the normal steel guitar, you know, like they did on the barn dance. And, and, and the Cotter balance that I understand you actually have a, a bottle band. Yeah. Yeah, there is. <laughs> and they were on America's Got Talent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they did very well. Bottle band, yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is St. Luke's uh, Bottle Band. Yeah. And they'll be here. Uh, how many? Uh, I mean, there's a whole array of people that, that, that. Oh, yeah. I don't even know how many. Uh, I'm not even sure that it says, but no, there's a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Yeah, and, and a whole bunch of bottles <laughs> <laughs> and different sizes. Yeah. And different sounds. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Different yeah. Sounds. It, that'll be kind of unique. Yeah, you know? donate some bottles for that band at, at all? <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. Okay, okay, so one more time. Yes. They want tickets. They, they, they call the, the Prairie Center. or, or Call the Prairie Center. Go to uh, prairiecenter.org and order your tickets online. Yeah, and it should be, it should be a wonderful season. Absolutely. And along and with that, remember... And you guarantee that, don't you? I guarantee it. And remember, you, if you order three programs, you get 15% off. Okay. If you order four programs, you get 20% off. If you order five or more programs, you get 25% off. So you have, uh, you, know, you have a way to get a little discount on your... And there's a senior discount, too, isn't there? Gee, I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, there is a senior yeah. discount. Right. Yeah. John, thanks for, thanks for being on the show. I enjoy it. Look forward to seeing you at, at Celebrate the Arts. Look forward to seeing okay. you there, too, as well. Okay. Get ready to place your bets in support of a great cause. Find out more here next on Speaking of Schaumburg. Recognizing the right of all children to a safe childhood, the Children's Advocacy Center of North and Northwest Cook County continuously strives to reduce trauma and provide support to child victims of violence and their families. Joining us today to tell us a bit about the organization, our Executive Director Mark Parr and Development Coordinator Ali Boggio Chair. Welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. Thank you, Mayor. Well, tell us, how, how did this Advocacy Center get started? Uh, the Advocacy Center was actually one of the first to get started in the state of Illinois when some local people, um, some police officers, one in particular, Darwin Adams, from the Streamwood Police Department, and some local legislators, uh, Doris Carpio, and others, uh, Terry Park, and some people from the United Way and the Hanover Township Mental Health Board recognized that there was a problem and that this approach would really help children and families here in the north and northwest suburbs. I know Michael Malley was uh, heavily involved in, in its founding, I think, in, in Hoffman Estates. He was as well, yes. Mayor O'Malley played a big part, certainly, as the center moved from 
the original uh, home in the Hanover Park Police Department to okay. the old Village Hall in Hoffman Estates. How is it funded? Where do you get your money from? We actually have several dif different sources of funding. Uh, most of our funding comes through governmental bodies, either the state of Illinois, our local townships. Uh, many local municipalities fund us as well. Uh, we're a United Way agency. Uh, private foundations and corporations help support us, and we do a number of fundraising events to make up the difference between what we're able to get through grants and what we need to run the agency. Allie, what's your role with, with, with I am the agency? development coordinator, so I handle a lot of those special events that Mark was just talking well, about. Tell me about some special events. Sure. Well, we have one coming up on October 10th. Um, it's at the Weston in Wheeling, right on Milwaukee Avenue. Um, it's a casino night, so we have casino games, blackjack, craps, roulette. We have a great silent auction, awesome raffle prizes, food from, let's see, Great Harvest Bread Company and the Ram, to name a few. And we also have an open bar, so it's oh, really my. fun. And what's the cost for that? The cost is 50 per ticket, and that includes that open bar and everything that I mentioned. And you keep mentioning open bar. What are you suggesting? <laughs> I'm <laughs> suggesting it's a good time. <laughs> okay. Uh, you have, have you done this before? Yes. This is our fifth or fourth? Fifth? I believe it's I our fifth. It's our fifth. It's my second casino night, so. If somebody wanted tickets, who would they call? They can call us, um, our number, and it's easier if you go on our website. So that's www.cachelps.org. They can get all of this information. Okay. And where, where, where's your demographics? Where, where do they come from? Where do, you, where do you draw from? Our communities that we serve are 38 different communities in the north and northwest suburbs of Cook County. Um, so everything from Evanston north up to Northbrook, and then all the communities here in northwest uh, suburban Cook County, uh, right up to all the county lines. So, and we even have some of the communities that are split with uh, Bartlett, for instance, with Cook County and DuPage. Now, how do you interact with these communities? What, what, well, do you most, mainly through our, the police departments. Uh, the children that we serve, for the most part, are involved because they've disclosed that some type of abuse has occurred. And uh, at that point, the police and our Department of Children and Family Services become involved in the investigation. Those are our partners, along with the Cook County State's Attorney's Office, during any investigation of a report of child abuse. And how many children are you, are you service at, at any, any, any time? Well, or? last year we had more than 400 new referrals for services, and when you add the children and families that we're serving from previous years, our number is about 700. What, what's, your, what's your goal in terms of developing programs for the Advocacy Center? Well, we want to try to be as comprehensive as possible so that children and families who have been impacted by abuse can get all the services they need in one place. So we have medical services, counseling, support groups, things to help people heal after the investigation has been completed. Okay, you work with, with I, I mean, imagine with so, social workers too in the police department, don't you? Very much, very much. The Schaumburg police social workers and many other communities that have uh, either victim witness people or social workers are very important partners for us. So when you identify abuse, What's the next step? What do you do then? I mean, you know. Well, um, if there, if the child comes in, step me through it. Child comes in, and we have a specially trained staff who interview the child to learn the facts of their abuse. If in fact something happened, if it's substantiated that abuse did occur, uh, there's a lot of work that goes into making sure that there's a safety plan in place so that they're not victimized again. And then again, all those supportive services that I mentioned. Um, to help them heal from the abuse. If the case does go into the court system, we have specially trained advocates who would accompany the family to all court hearings so that they always have support to get through whatever it is they're faced with. And all the services that we provide are free to the families. They never have to worry about having to pay for any of the things that we offer. How many staffers do you have? We have uh, 17 people on staff. The majority are master's level social workers or counselors. Are, they, are these full time? Mainly, uh, 14 are, are full-time and three are part-time right now. Tell me about more programs you have besides this. You have more than just that one program, don't you? Um, as far as fundraising or Fundraising, yes, absolutely. Oh, for fundraising, we have lots of events. We have well, tell me about them. <laughs> sure, I'd love to. We have three main events. So our casino night, as I mentioned, we have a gala. That's in April. This year, the date is April 25th. Where's the gala? That's at Medina Country Club. Wow. Yeah, so last year was our first You gotta get gala. dressed up, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very fancy. Um, so that's a little higher scale. And then we have another event in June, our 5K walk, and that's accessible to anyone, and it's really great for families. Okay. Tell me about the Medina thing. I mean, what, what is that? You say, how, how expensive is that? How expensive is it? Well, we raised 111000 last year. That's one night. Yep, in one night. 
Okay. Last year, yeah, the tickets were three hundred dollars for an individual ticket. Okay. So by far, it's. I imagine you got a corporate support yes. for mm -hmm. something like yes. that. Yes, uh, Thermos was our primary sponsor. Um, and they will be again this coming year for the 2015 gala. Oh, that's great. That's, yeah. that's wonderful. How, how many come on for that gala? Last year we had about 180 guests. Okay. So we're going to aim for 200 this year. Okay. Really pack the room. Well, it sounds like it. Sounds like it. You're not throwing in golf here, are you? You know, actually, golf was one of our um, auction items last year. Oh, really? Yep. Mm -hmm. At the Medina Country Club? Yeah, one of our board members is a member there, so okay. he... Who would that be? That would be Brian Burke of Lynx Technology. Uh, I Chamber. knew it. I knew it. I knew Brian's name was going to come up. <laughs> we have to. It always does, doesn't it? Yeah, sure does. Yeah, he he contributes a lot towards uh, Park District, for example, mm -hmm. foundation over there. I know he's so involved in in the village here. Oh sure, oh sure. He's done a, he's done a great job. Yeah, I, I I heard he was a member of of uh, the country club. So, mm -hmm. so I don't have a country club. You know, they wouldn't let me. In. Maybe Medina. Maybe this could be your <laughs> opening. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so uh, when is this coming up again? I'm sorry. Um, the gala is in April, April 25th. And then that walk I mentioned is in June, the last okay. weekend in June. Okay, those are three events now. You said mm -hmm. you've got more. We have a lot of smaller events that we have throughout the year. Um, okay. We have a holiday shopping boutique that's held in November at our center. So we bring a in- boutique? Mm -hmm, we bring in a local vendors from people who sell things like Mary Kay, Jamberry Nails. They all come to our center and people can come shop for their holiday gifts. And those vendors kick back a portion of the sales Don't, don't say kick back, back to when I'm here, please. <laughs> <laughs> donate. They donate, donate, donate. They okay, donate okay, a portion okay. of their sales. Okay, that's good. How many, are you the only person who coordinates the, these things or? I'm not, we are a team of three. Okay. We have our director of development, Simone Wheeler, and our okay. director of communications. I think I met her at the open house. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jennifer Georgievic, who you may not have met. She okay. just had a baby, so. Okay, all right. You know, we do have one other event coming up too that's gonna be in Schaumburg, and that is a celebrity oh, waiter night oh, tell in me about October. That. Um, we're looking for celebrities, so if you're interested. Well, uh, I'm not sure I qualify, <laughs> especially well, after these programs. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> Um, Ricky B's Prime Burger House, which is op has opened up in Woodfield. Um, I've got a fi five o'clock ribbon cutting over there. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yep. Very good. Well, we've been working with Robert, the owner there, okay. and uh, this was an idea that we were able to develop with him to have local celebrities, local people of influence, come out and work along with the wait staff uh, to try to draw attention to the cause that we're raising money for the Children's Advocacy Center and also you know that could really be a, enjoy that could be a disaster you know that. <laughs> <laughs> well we'll see ill, ill equipped people trying to trying to serve don't worry all of our celebrities are paired with the work staff there so okay. celebrities are just to mingle all right, right. Well, thanks for being with us thank you thank you, thank you. good to see you good to see you don't miss your chance for an up-close look at one of Schaumburg's architectural gems find out more next here on speaking of Schaumburg The Schweiker House was built in 1938 by renowned architect Paul Schweiker and still stands in its original Schomburg location. With me now for the Schweiker House Preservation Trust Fund are President John Latko and Executive Director Todd Winger. Well, welcome to Speaking of Schomburg. Thanks for having us. Tell me, why is the Schweiker House so important to, to the village of Schomburg? What's so unique about it? John, would you like to talk about Schweiker's place in modernism? I can talk about that. I, um, Paul Schweiker was um, an early uh, proponent of what be, um, a, a new type of architecture which became known as modernism. And in the 1930s, uh, he was a young architect who was, um, had worked for David Adler, the famed Chicago architect and others, and uh, decided to start his own practice. He um, um, actually was hired in Schaumburg by uh, a banking family called the Kearns. His name was the Kearns and they owned a farm on Beecham Road. And they wanted him to, uh, they wanted him to remodel their farmhouse. So he it came. It was a horse out. farm, wasn't it? Did they have horses? Was current? it a horse farm? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it might have been an oval on, on the on the property. Okay, as well. sure. And so he came out and looked at the farmhouse they wanted to remodel and said, uh, he said, uh, no, I can't really do anything with this, but I could do something with that barn. And he and they hired him to actually uh, remodel the barn and make it into a residence, which I understand has had 14 bedrooms and uh, it was a, it was a quite quite the extravaganza. So uh, that was during the depression. It was the middle of the depression, and uh, the Kearns decided to uh, pay. I don't know if it was in full or part. They decided to pay Schweiker with 
land from their farms. So they gave him acreage uh, along Meacham Road. And this brings us to the Schweiker House. Uh, Paul Schweiker, as a young modernist architect, um, decided to use the land to build his own home and studio. Uh, that's how the Schweiker House was done. It was done as a modernist building. That type of architecture, um, that type of architecture was relatively new. Uh, the idea behind it was that um, before that, most uh, architecture referenced some historic period. Uh, we've all seen uh, Greek uh, temple-like bank buildings and uh, uh, Romanesque church buildings, uh, things that referenced historical styles. The modernist movement decided to reference none of that. Something it, brand new, huh? It was something brand new and completely, uh, completely new and uh, became, became um, you know, the uh, avant-garde type of architecture that was uh, developing in the mid-century. So Paul Schweiker is a proponent of that. Does was that, was that, that, that a, a, a right thing too? Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, yeah. yes, was, was involved in that. Uh, he had a particular style that was known as a prairie style that he, that he initiated uh, and um, the, um, the modernist movement uh, became so prevalent that he did incorporate those types of so things. elements of that in, in, in existing facility. Absolutely, yeah, yes. Right. And yes, uh, Schweiker built his home and studio and um, Frank Lloyd Wright did visit there. And, uh, and another major uh, name in uh, modernist architecture was Mies van der Rohe, who at that time had left Germany and came to uh, what's now the uh, Illinois Institute of Technology. IIT, I see. IIT has, has in the, Chicago. Yes. And uh, he became a really good friend of Paul Schweiker's. Um, so that house um, that Schweiker built is of particular interest because uh, it, was, um, it, was, it wasn't done for a client, it was done for himself. So he didn't have to argue with the client about how it should look. He, he put his thoughts and his philosophy into the house and um, designed it to be exactly what he wanted. So it's a, it's a wonderful expression of Paul Schweiker's philosophy of what modern architecture is. Where's that located? It's on Meacham Road, uh, south of Schaumburg Road at 645 South Meacham Road. It's a long gravel driveway? It's a long gravel driveway. It sits far back from the road. So it's sort of this secluded sure. little world unto itself. Sure. What, what is your role as, as far as the Preservation Trust is concerned? I'm the executive director of the Schweiker House Preservation Trust. And so I'm in charge of um, helping the board set up meetings. I'm setting up tours, trying what, what to promote the house. What kind of tours have, have, have have you had over there and, and, you know, and, recently, what, and what kind of response have you gotten? You know, the, the response has been fantastic. We've had a lot of architectural society groups. We've had the American Institute of Architects out there for several events. We recently hosted the ALA, which is the Association of Licensed Architects, had a lunch and learn event out there. And uh, the architects found it uh, just fascinating, uh, this gem. And is it's, here it, in Schaumburg. It's, it's just not the house either, it's the grounds as well. Isn't it? it's, it's true. It didn't have a marvelous garden in the back? And exactly. It's on the National Register of Historic Places, both because of the home uh, designed by Paul Schweiker, but also the grounds were collaborated with, with architect, or landscape architect, I should say, Franz Lipp, who did work for the McCormicks at Cantini and other locations in the Midwest. Very well known. And what kind of tours have you, have you conducted from, from lo locally? I mean, do we... Have you had open houses over there? And yes, uh, locally we offered, uh, we had been offering it once a year uh, up until recently when the Life Lease resident passed away last year. Um, now we're hoping to open it up a little bit more often, but our standing tour is in October in conjunction with Docomomo, which is the documentation and conservation of the modern movement. It's an organization that's dedicated to modernism and preserving modern structures. Okay. Once a year they have their open house tour and that's in October of this year. And we're going to have one here? Correct, yes. We're October when? October 11th. It's a Saturday. Okay. It's open to the public on what, that. What are day. the hours and how can people take advantage of that? Sure. Um, typically we offer tours from 10 to 2, 10 a.m. to 2 on the hour. And they can uh, visit uh, our website at www.schweikerhouse.org for more information on the tours and how to schedule okay, the so, reservation. So they can sign up? Yes, in advance. And, and you've had a tour in the past. How many pe people have come out? Uh, about 80 people showed up last year for the tour. It was quite okay. well received. And probably most of them were local residents sure. who were anxious to see the house for the first time. What are some of the unique features of the Schweiker House, of the bu building itself? You know, 
And it's got a studio. As you come up, you've got a studio on one side, right? It's pretty numerous, and, yeah. And, and, and tell us some of the well, unique... I can, I can say that, um, in a way, it's two buildings. It is the home and it's then the studio side, which, is, uh, which are connected by a roof and uh, what we call a breezeway, but uh, it's, uh, they're actually two separate buildings. And one of the amazing things about Paul Schweiker was that this place was built in 1937-38, uh, which is when it was finished. And he had already incorporated into that uh, solar energy uh, passive solar type of type of architecture, which uh, we will feature on the tour. It's uh, there was a very early use of that that type of uh, technology. Tell me about the Langsdorf family. Langsdorf family. Well, Paul Schweiker lived in the house. I'll start with Paul Schweiker. He lived he lived, built the house in '38, and then in 1953, he was hired to be the director of the School of Architecture for Yale University. So he had to sell the house and move to New Haven. Um, enters the Langsdorfs. Uh, Alexander Langsdorf and Martil Langsdorf were looking for a house. Alexander was uh, a famous nuclear physicist who worked with Fermi on the Manhattan Project. Uh, and Martil was a uh, famous architect, um, sorry, a, a renowned artist. Arch artist yes. A renowned artist who has, to today has uh, works in museums uh, around the world and uh, an old, 30-some, I think, in the Art Institute alone. There's a large piece of art that she had, had, had done. It now resides here at the Prairie Center. That's it, correct. The, well, we're looking at the foyer as you come, come in the door. Yes. Painted yes. for former uh, mayor, uh, Bob former, Bob, she, yeah, she got mm -hmm. she, she gave that to Bob Atcher for display. So, uh, and you can actually see it through the, uh, from the plaza through the, uh, through the main windows. It's between yes. the theater doors and the inner lobby. Yes. Right. Yes. Well, um, the, um, Langsdorf. The Langsdorf. What about the, the, the atomic clock? There's a connection there yes. too, isn't there? So the Langsdorf were looking for a place. They found this to be the perfect place because it was kind of uh, out um, of the city. They were living in Hyde Park after the Manhattan Project, and it had it already had a studio. Um, Lang, the Langsdorf, or I should say, Alexander Langsdorf was uh, also well known because of um, the uh, the group of physicists. A group of physicists which he was among, um, who had worked on the Manhattan Project, had put together a petition to give to uh, Harry Truman when he was president, asking him not to use the drop the bomb on, uh, on sure. Japanese, uh, on Japan. And that group became known uh, as uh, a group of physicists. And their reason, I should say, their reason was uh, they felt that it would start an arms race. Uh, we can see how that turned out. Uh, but uh, they, um, they started a group of, um, of uh, physicists who then published a, an annual uh, bulletin that was called the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, I believe. I think mm -hmm. I've got that right. one right. And they would they would then report on the state of um, of uh, uh, weaponry. How close weaponry. how close they were to, to, there was to a, to a and, nuclear war. And what they Correct. did was on that on that pamphlet that they originally was a pamphlet they uh, included a logo and the logo was. Um, an abstract clock that became known as the Doomsday Clock. And for those of us who are old enough to remember, um, once a year they would um, put the Doomsday Clock on the news and the group, the Atomic Bulletin group of uh, physicists, would de uh, uh, explain or they would declare uh, that we are closer to nuclear annihilation or we had or we are and they'd move, the hand, they'd move the hand on the clock. And that's sure. exactly what they would exactly. do. And, and every year the news and the, would and the show clock it. was designed by Mark Martil, wasn't it? That's that's where we're going. Yes, okay. yes. Martil right. designed that clock for the initial uh, bulletin that was sent, so that's, and uh, it's still there. So there are several stories here as far as the Schweiger House is concerned. Absolutely. Besides being an architectural masterpiece, right. there's there's, there's a, a, a tremendous story there as far as as far as Langsdorfs are concerned. Absolutely. Certainly, certainly, and, certainly as far as Martil is concerned. Yeah. And who, Martil, who, who actually named this this, this building? Ah, that's right. Schomburg Prairie Center for the Arts was her her recommendation. That's right. Thank thank you for thank you. Thanks Charles. for having us. Thank you. John, thank you for the narrative. It's that's, that's very, very interesting. It's, uh, this is going to be a well sought after program. Thank you. That'll do it for this edition of Speaking of Schomburg. Join us again next month for another all new episode. Until then, I'll see you around town. Oh,